thanks for the support as a channel member, Aaron Bick. Yeah, Roma again. Yeah, that is who we played at this stage two years ago. Yeah, they were in fifth place in Syria then when they knocked us out. Still fifth in Syria. I, I don't actually know how they keep qualifying for the Champions League from fifth place. But we really can't lose to them again. Hello and welcome to part 111 of the Greek Odyssey. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have both legs of our Champions League first knockout round game against Roma. Since you were last with me, many, many games have been played. That's last season, two seasons ago. I was looking for the intro to check when we played Roma before. Um, yeah, things are going well. We've actually won every single game so far in the league this year. 25 played, 25 wins, 75 for our goal difference. Um, Sonny is scoring goals for fun in all competitions, actually scoring more in Europe um, than he is in the league. 21 from 20 starts in all competitions. In addition to winning the European Golden Boy last year, this year he's won the Copper Trophy, which I've never heard of. I've never had a player win this before. I understand this is like a world young player of the year thing. Um, the Kylian Mbappe has won a couple of times, Jao Felix, um, and then... Lots of others since, but this is where all of the best young players, they all pass through winning this award. Um, Tom Davidson there. All right, Tom, 25 years old, 98, sign whatever the price. That's the kind of level we're expecting out of Sonny when you see some of these other players that are, are knocking around in there. Sonny is still getting a little bit of stick down in the, uh, down in the comments every day. I don't really get it. He's a four and a half star current ability player. He's still, what, 20, 21 years old? 21 years old. Played six times for Brazil already. He's going to be a superstar. The question is whether or not we can keep him at the club because he's one of many players wanting to go and play in the Premier League, um, including Kan Saravic and Chermont, who've both actually requested transfers. They are both on the transfer list at their own request, um, but nowhere near meeting the fees. I want 80 million for Chermont, 40 for Kansarovic. I know I'm not going to get those kind of fees, but I don't want to sell those players, so it's fine. And Sonny, Font and Gill, also all a little bit um, unsettled, although Gill really is because he was left out of the Champions League squad rather than wanting to join another club. And there has been a little bit of transfer business go on in January as well. Not a lot. I was given a little bit of budget by Mrs. Wearmouth, which is mad. She gave me almost nothing to spend in the summer, 13 million to spend in January. I didn't spend it all. Um, all we've actually done is sold um, Salakis because he was told us he was going to leave for free at the end of the season. This man is a monster. Um, but Beagleopolis is now our backup goalkeeper, um, which means Michael Beagles has now been fully involved in every series I've done this year, I think, including the one over on Twitch. He always seems to get the best new gens. Do what Beagles does, folks, and try and go for the same players he's going for. Um, we brought in two players with our Spensies that we had as, as a result of all that. Uh, Kevin Acosta is our new right winger. I know we already had two very good right wingers, but this guy is sensational. 19 years old, already 11 caps for Colombia. Four and a half star current ability, five star potential ability. He's better than Pedraza. He's better than Williams. He's the love child of me and Acosta, who was here before, clearly, because um, he shares our names and that's how children work. Um, and this guy, we've just raided Olympiacos for another one of their youngsters, Fotis Chatsiasis, um, 18 years old, not yet played for the Greek under-21 team. He will. We just, I like taking players off Olympiakos. To be fair, they're taking the players off the smaller clubs. Heraklis lost him to Olympiakos. And then, oh, an 18-year-old at Olympiakos, you say? We'll have a bit of that. We're basically funding Olympiakos at this point by taking their youngsters off of them. Um, but that's that's the transfer business. We're in great form. Um, by and large, we're happy, apart from a few players who want to leave. And now we need to make sure we get the job done against Roma. And this is the team we're going to send there to get that job done. Tonesi in goal. A back four of Lutz, Bilbao, Hernandez and Solazano. Milo at the base of the midfield. Dominguez and Duffy ahead of him. Chermont, Sonny and Pedraza are the front three. If you're wondering why you're not seeing any of Laika and what's happened to Laika, remember he broke his back in the summer. He is now fit and playing again and as good as ever in the league. Starting to think I'll never do an uninterrupted video again until I move house, which is soon. We're like two weeks away, but doorbell ringing. It might ring again. I've got a skip coming. And um, yeah, Laika scoring goals for fun in the league, back to his best in the league. Identical average rating to last season. He's not lost. A, he's not skipped a beat, not lost a step. 
The only problem is we could only add one player to our Champions League squad and I wanted to add Acosta, so Leica misses out because he wasn't in the Champions League squad before. In hindsight, probably should have had him in from the start. I didn't anticipate bringing someone in who would be a starting player for us. So is that always the Danish flag? That doesn't look right. No. What's going on here? Oh, is that the, that's the Danish badge, is it? Does it normally show the badge there rather than the flag? I guess it does. I mean, I've played nearly 2,000 hours on this game and I've never noticed that it shows the badge, not the flag there. Is that normal? No idea. I think I've introduced you to the team. Should we just play the game now? Or else I feel like it's never going to get done. Um, I'm, I'm procrastinating because the consequences of us bottling at this stage again are quite severe. I think realistically, mentioning as I did when we're moving um, and the fact that I can't keep my office set up until the day we move, I've stressed them out. I can't leave all this set up until the day we move. So realistically, we're moving in about two weeks' time. I've probably got a week tops left of recording content out of this garage. Now, because we're moving a little earlier than I thought, that does mean we'll potentially have a little bit of time after we've moved where I could come back and finish the series if it's not done. But also the beta is likely to be out sometime around then. You'll have had a couple of weeks with no content. I kind of feel like I need to finish the series now. And see my, there's my doorbell again. I warned you. Oh, that wasn't my skip either. That was my last gusto food delivery that I'm going to get to this house. My dinner's for the next week. Goodness me. We conceded a goal as well, apparently. This is not going to plan. We're, bottom line, we've got to win the Champions League now or we might never. It won't. I'm not, I'm not saying this is definitely the last season. I do think there's a good chance this, unless we get knocked out now, in which case we'll fit another season in before I have to pack the office away. But if we get through to the semi-finals or something, I don't see us doing another full season at this house. So there'd then be a couple of weeks break and then we try and finish it at the end because there's going to be a couple of weeks break regardless. Um, so we've got to win. We've got to win now. Now, normal rules and all that. We're away in the first leg of a Champions League knockout game so it's always an advantage to be away from home first I always prefer to do that and we'll be happy if we only lose 1-0 we'll be even happier if we can grab an away goal and Chermont is in here just before half time and should have squared that to Sonny but tries to go it alone on his weak foot and that just wasn't a very good plan um, we assertively owe Roma after what happened last time out what we don't want is a repeat of what seems to be our typical exit these days where we lose the away leg and then win the home leg, but lose an aggregate. So we need to be... It's 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 tricky, because I want an away goal, but at the same time, I don't want to lose 3-0. So there, there may come a time in this second half where if we continue to play as poorly as we are, we've only had two shots, if we continue to play this poorly, there probably comes a time where we just try and shut up shop and say, OK, we'll take 1-0 and do, do the business back at the spaghetti hat. The only problem is... I don't know if we're capable of shutting them out because it's not a way we've ever tried to play. And now we've conceded a second goal and it kind of stops being an option anyway because at 2-0 down, we've got to score now. And we just can't do away from home in the Champions League. And I know, I know there's going to be people saying it's because you're going there and attacking. And I refer you back to Bourne and I refer you back to Bayern Munich and Barcelona and every other save I've done Every series I've ever done on YouTube, home, none eaten, none lead to legend every year. This is what I always do. This isn't new. This, you know, we always attack away from home in the Champions League because it's the only way I know how. Whenever I try and defend, we concede goals. Now, I know we're trying to do this with a smaller squad or a smaller budget, less fancy pants players, but we've got like half of the best wonder kids in the world at our team. Sonny's done really well there, but the shot isn't very good. We've got a team full of players who are wanted by Europe's elite clubs. It's not that we're trying to do this with a bunch of people who've got to go back to work as a plumber tomorrow morning. We should we should be good enough to play our way. We're going to make a triple change. Who else have we got on the bench? Banny. Banny's the other one to bring on in this situation. We're going to do... Those three, so Banny, Acosta and Richard coming on. 
big changes, but we're doing nothing going forward at the moment. So hopefully those boys can conjure something up. Um, they've both been in a lot. They've both been in good form in the league, where they play a lot more than they've played in the Champions League, and hopefully they can do something. A goal here, and we're happy if we score here, two-one, perfect result. Oh, we have Richards in his tenth goal of the season. It's Roma two, Apollon one, and that gives us a massive lifeline going into the return fixture back at the Spaghetti Had. We have an away goal, and we're only one goal behind, and it's our home game. This is huge, and of course it's a long throw. It's been the theme of FM20. Oh, I thought we were going to concede from a set piece there as well. That would be hideous. I realise at this point we should be shutting up shop. and But like I say, I don't think we know how, and I don't want to risk it. I'd, I'd rather roll the dice and gamble on 2-2 at the risk of it being 3-1. I know it makes no sense. I know it's not the way you win Champions Leagues, but it's the way I win Champions Leagues, and you never know. Richard can't quite get that under control. He got a little bit too far under it, I think. The defender did quite well and Chermont just clears that. He's not messing around, is he? Get the ball away. Give us the final whistle. We're we're going to be delighted with this result. It's the first time we've lost a game of football in a long time, since Inter in the group stage. We just don't play well against Italian teams. But that is definitely a result we can turn around. Remember what we did against Inter in the home game in the Champions League after they beat us 4-0 away. We are more than capable of turning this this around and getting through to the quarterfinal. Here we go then, second leg time. And many things have happened since the first leg. Firstly, uh, we've won the league. We've won the league without even drawing a game. And we won the league in our first game in the championship group. I mean, that's about as comfortable as it's ever been. We're pretty dominant now. And we've also had Sonny uh, miss training twice because he was at a nightclub. Um, but then accept his fines and then say he doesn't want to leave the club anymore. So Sonny's now happy to stay. Following him off of the wanting to leave list was Font. Um, and Chermont's the only real one that I don't want to lose who's holding out now. So hopefully Chermont will follow along soon. But um, dressing room atmosphere has taken a nice little bump off the back of that. So Sonny, despite being a rascal, is going to start again because why wouldn't I start him when he now wants to stay at the club and he's one of the best... Or he is the best young player in the world. Um, Solazano has picked up an injury, though, which seems to be a, refer a recurring theme. It's a groin strain for him this time. He's out for the next three weeks. Duffy is also injured for this game. And remember, Leica isn't part of the Champions League squad. So slightly different team to what you saw in the first leg, but hopefully enough about them to get us through into the quarterfinals of the Champions League. I'm just checking on recording. God, can you imagine? Um, so, Tennessee in goal, a back four of Lutz, Bilbao, Hernandez and Smith. Milo at the base of the midfield, Dominguez and Font ahead of him. Chermont, Sonny and Acosta are the front three. Let's get into the game. I never used to say let's get into the game before every game. I need to stop doing that. Let's get into the game and let's hopefully get in to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Did we get that? When was the last time we got to the quarterfinals? I don't even remember. We got to the final three seasons ago now. We need we need to win it this year. I've decided we've got to win it. This video's had too many interruptions already. The skip still hasn't arrived, by the way. In the hour or so, it took me to play the in-betweeny bits and do a, I mean, a cup of coffee and stuff while I wasn't playing the game fully for an hour. But in the hour or so that's passed, skip still hasn't arrived. Um, similar to yesterday, I am recording this the morning it's coming out as well. That's a habit I also need to get out of. So, yeah, we've got to win the league this year. I can't can't handle this stress. Can't handle the stress of having the doorbell ring constantly and waiting for important stuff to happen while I've got to be recording videos. Acosta is charging down the right hand side here, though. Can he get a crossover? To, oh, he does even better than that. Skips past one man and then fires it into the side netting. I mean, that's new. I've not seen that before in FM20. Hmm. So Roma with the ball forward. It's the header is one by Lutz, but it doesn't actually end up going towards any of our midfield players. Our midfield are looking a little all over the place at the moment. I know we're only five minutes in, but we've only managed 30% possession so far. And unless we can get a hold of this midfield, we're not going to win this game. It's as simple as that, really. So, fingers crossed, someone does get a hold of the midfield. We've got Banny sat there down on the bench, who will be coming on at half-time if, if, if we are struggling for possession. 
Um, but Tanessi's got the ball all the way back to him now. He plays it forward to Dominguez, who finally has time to turn and pick a pass. Find Sonny. Sonny is through. I think Sonny's offside, actually. The free kick has been given for Roma. It was a good save anyway. We'll call it a save rather than a miss. But that's what happens if we can get the ball to Dominguez. He can deliver those kind of balls over the top, which are Sonny's bread and butter. Dominguez now with the in-swinging free kick. And I'm not sure who was crowning around in the middle there. Hernandez and uh, Bilbao both there, little and large at the back for us today. Um, and Dominguez now on the left-hand side again, plays it back to Milo. Milo now to Smith, a, a right back, a centre-back playing out of position at right-back for us today because we still don't really have an adequate right-back replacement for Solizano when he's injured. Which for a man who's injured as often as Solizano is, is a real problem. But we're 30 minutes in, still no breakthrough. Remember, things are very finely poised. If we grab a goal, we go ahead in the tie because of our away goal. Corner from Acosta, uh, but it is cleared, uh, but only as far as Smith, who hopefully is going to deliver the ball back forward to Acosta again, who can keep this move going. Instead, it goes to Hernandez who's made it all the way back, and I thought he was giving the ball away there. Bilbao, we've done quite well to keep hold of the ball here and work this chance when we looked like we were going to be giving the ball away, and it does fall to Kevin Acosta, a January signing who's already scoring his sixth goal of the season, only 19 years old, and look at the goatee beard he's already been able to grow. Lovely stuff from Acosta. Hernandez has balls of steel because he looked like he was giving the ball away on the halfway line there, something we've seen so many times before. And the only player in our half was Tennessee. That that had the potential to be a disaster, but he kept his nerve, played it across to Bilbao, and now we are ahead in the tie and away goals. Milo with the corner now. It's bobbling around in the air, and Hernandez is there again. Duvan Hernandez is doing it on his own, boys and girls. It's 2-0. It's two goals in a minute or so, and this entire tie is now turned on its head, which is exactly what we needed because we were losing. We needed to turn it on its head. Lovely stuff. What a what a mature performance from Hernandez so far as well, who rightly is currently the player on the pitch with the highest rating. We have dominated Roma in that first half. Still never did manage to assert ourselves in the midfield. We're still only on 44% of possession, but Roma have only had two shots. They missed them both, whereas we have been attack, 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 because it's the only way we know how. Um, half an hour to go. I'm going to drop a little bit of praise. I'm also looking down at the bench. Chermont and Sonny are, are struggling, as is Font. And I think we're probably going to, we're potentially going to take off all three of them, although I'm not keen to bring Carnavali on. Um, I'm wondering why Richard's not on that bench. I'm sure I had a good reason. Um, I'm assuming he's he's injured. I don't really want to bring on Carnavali, though, so I'm going to make those two changes. We'll bring Sanchez and Banny on. Um, yeah, we'll leave them that way around. I think, I mean, that's a nice substitution to be able to make with 20 minutes to go. Players of that quality entering a match at this stage of the game. And we've got quality on the bench. I mean, Carnavali is a good striker. He's he's not a Champions League winner, I don't think, as a starter. But as a player that we bring on with 10 minutes to go, with the pace that he's got and the problems he can cause, Carnavali can come on. Um it's a corner for Roma and Bill Bow heads clear, but not very far. And it's a goal for Roma and the tie is now level again. It's 2-1 on the night, 3-3 on aggregate, level on away goals as well. And that's the last thing we wanted to see, especially now we've taken Sonny off because we're now relying on Carnavali. I mean, offside anyone? Oh no, Smith's keeping him on. That is problematic. Let's get creative. And let's hope Carnavali can can conjure something up for us. I don't know that we win from this position because I think that's a little bit of a blow with 10 minutes to go. And it is Roma who have had a much, much better second half than we have. And But Lutz heads to Sanchez. Sanchez has got 30 seconds to make himself a Champions League hero again. What a pass for Carnavali! Who, I mean, he had the chance there, didn't he? Second clear-cut chance of the game. Could have made himself an all-time Apollon hero, but no. It's Smith with a long throw. This is going to be the last opportunity of normal time. Smith hurls it towards the penalty area. And Milo, no, not even time to get the shot away. It's extra time. I I don't know if we get to make another substitution here. I always speculate. I mean, the only one we'd really want to bring on is Pedraza for energy because Acosta's shattered and we can make that change. So Pedraza comes on for Acosta just to give us a little bit more attacking. Umph. I mean, we've changed our entire attacking four. 
we're definitely throwing some fresh legs up there when we need them. We just need them to weigh in with a performance now. And it's time for 10 minutes of passion. Tennessee, we don't want the ball at this end of the pitch. Tennessee plays it to Bilbao. Bilbao to Banny. Banny with that ball over the top to Carnavali. Both him and Dominguez can ping them all day long. The only problem is it's Carnavali who's up there now. And Carnavali just, he scored three goals all season, I think. He's, uh, I mean, I tried to sell him in January, but here he is being the man we're relying on for goals in a game like this. I'm tempted to put Banny up front with him. If we get, if we concede, that's definitely what we're doing. But that's probably a bad, a bad way to decide to make a change. Well, if we're losing, then I'll make the change. But as it is, we'll wait for penalties. I just, I don't think Carnavali's going to score. But we're making that change. It's a big risk of ten minutes to go. But Banny can go up there in that role, and we can do that. That, boys and girls, is what's known in the trade as rolling the dice, because we're committing an extra man forward, giving up a little bit in the midfield we were already struggling in to try and find a winning goal. They've hit the post. The tactical change hasn't gone through yet. That wasn't a result of the change I've just made. The change has now happened, and it's Roma with the corner. So again, if they score from a set piece, that's not my fault. Get your excuses in early, Kev. Here we go. Long throw from Smith. Are at fault for their equaliser because he was playing them all on side. Sanchez! Carnavali! I always believed in him! Domenico Carnavali with his fourth goal of the season. It was never in doubt. He was always going to be the hero. Long throw from Smith. It's a really poor clearance from the Roma defender and Carnavali. What a finish. And we're getting Banny back into midfield immediately. Have we paused the game? There seems to be stuff going on in the background. Um, so get Banny back into midfield. He went up there and made a difference, clearly. That's what's just happened. But we'll go back into our normal system now. And we're still not going to go defensive because I don't have it in me. I just, I don't think, I don't think it will work. So I'm not going to do it. Pedraza charging down the, the uh, right-hand side. Banny was still up front for that move. And Carnavali should have squared it to him. But he's so unused to having a strike partner that I guess he didn't even know he was there. But the important thing is, thanks to the hero of the hour, Domenico Carnavali, we are in the hat for the uh, quarterfinal of the Champions League. We made hard work of that, boys and girls, but it's made us £8 million, which is lovely. I mean, we're a little bit beyond caring about the money at this point. We just want to win the Champions League this year, but it does help with the finances. Um, do we get the draw before the next match? If so, I can show you who we're going to be playing tomorrow. When does the draw happen? The draw does happen before the next game. So we're just going to fast forward in time and um, we'll see who we're playing next. Here we go then. Quarterfinal and semi-final draws happening today. So this is where we really find out if this has the potential to be our year. Although looking at the team still in it, there's not going to be any easy routes through to the final. It's us, Inter, Liverpool, PSG, Chelsea, Juventus, Man City, Tottenham. I think every team there has broken our hearts at one point or another during this series. If I had to pick based on previous experiences in this series, we'll take Chelsea or Juventus, please. Chelsea, I don't remember playing at any point. Juventus, we know we've beaten multiple times. So Juventus would be the perfect draw for us for this quarterfinal. We want to avoid Inter. Although we know we can beat them, but we know they can thump us. PSG and Inter, get rid of one of them. They can both beat us. That's good. Juventus, we'll take... Juventus away is perfect. We'll take this. Let's do... The saying it three times trick that we know always works. Apollon. 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 Rubbish. Rubbish. So now it's Liverpool, Chelsea or Man City. It's going to be so hard. It's this one. There you go. We're Manchester City away. We're going to do this. We've got to do it the hard way. Let's see what the semi-final looks like then. Um, so it'll be Inter or Paris Saint-Germain versus Juventus or Tottenham. Um, and us or Man City against Liverpool or Chelsea. So we've got to beat a bunch of Premier League teams if we're going to win the Champions League for the first time. And it is set up for another Apollo and Tottenham final as well, which will be the third final of the series, major European final. that will be Apollo against Tottenham. And they've beaten us in the last two. It's a long way to go before we're in the final yet, though. We've got to beat Manchester City and either Liverpool or Chelsea. And if we look at that Premier League table, Manchester City are top. Um, Liverpool and Chelsea, third and fourth, and Tottenham, potential finalist opponents, 
are in second. I don't think we're winning the Champions League this year, boys and girls. Goodness me, will we give it a good go. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.